there. I'd like to thank you for joining me today for episode 26 of Midmo Mama. My name is Jenny and I live in Sedalia, Missouri in the United States where I am making in the Midwest. My program is about yarn crafts and recipes and whatever else I decide I want to talk about. And in today's episode, I'm going to show you how to make hammy black eyed peas and I'm going to make chocolate morsel pastry cookies. So if that sounds like things you're interested in, then stick with me and let's get this show on the road. Now it's time for Mama Crafts, and I have started two new projects since my last episode. So I'm going to show you my knitting project. I put the, uh, the, um, Janet Guthrie sweater aside to start on something new. I have it in my Vera Bradley bag. I don't know what the pattern is of it. I it was given to me, so I don't know. But um, man, I should have looked it up. But in one of my previous episodes, I featured a pattern in my pattern showcase for this uh, for this design. And my knitting friend, Elizabeth, she had remarked about what a pretty top this was. So um, over the summer, we decided that at some point we were going to knit it together because I liked it and she liked it and we both liked it and we thought that we would make this top together. So... Several months ago, I bought the yarn I needed. I had three skeins, and so I bought an additional four to make my size. I needed five, five ball or seven balls of 50 gram uh, balls of yarn. So the pattern that we are making together, we cast on a week ago this past Monday. And the name of the pattern is Cascades Tea by Emily Kintai. And the yarn I'm using is Knit Picks Cotlin in Raindrop. And I am using my collage needles in US size 7. So let me show you. I would show you the pattern but my printer only prints black and white so I will sh show you a picture from the Knit Picks website of the pattern. It's a beautiful top. It's it's a it's a a straight knit and it's got a lace detail on the bodice and on the upper back and it's got a little lace detail around the hem and it's got a split seam down the side. So let me show you what I've gotten so far. I, I, I've made a significant, I would say it's a significant amount of progress considering how slow I normally knit. My potato chips out of the bag. <laughs> When I go to Panera Bread, sometimes I'll get potato chips because I don't have to eat them right away. But they always remain in my bag because I'm not really a chip person and normally I just give my chips to my husband. But I kind of forgot they were in there. So... So, I've got... I did my swatch using using the recommended needles. This is my swatch and it came out lovely. Now I was supposed to wash and block it. 
I didn't. And it came out, it actually came out knitted up the perfect size. But I am knitting the top size um, that is a little bit bigger than what I am. And so if there's any shrinkage, that should be okay. Um, but this is this is the yarn I'm using. It is it is called Raindrop. It's the Knit Picks Cotlin. And Cotlin is um, a DK weight yarn. It is 70% tanguis cotton. Tanguis. And 30% linen. So it's a cotton linen blend. And it's DK weight. And they come in 50 gram balls. So I have seven. Okay. And because I have two different dye lots on my actual project, I am alternating um, so that I don't end up with side by side in the ball. You really can't see a huge difference, but just in case there's enough difference to notice, I went ahead and decided to, to alternate because... You know, I, I laid them, I laid the balls side by side uh, for my girlfriends in Panera and, and they all seemed to think that one ball was ever so slightly lighter than the other one. And that's quite possibly true. So in order to avoid, you know, huge blocks of differential colors, I'm alternating every two rows so that it they blend a little bit better. So the color I'm using is Raindrop. And this is what I've gotten so far. I think it's about two, two and a half, perhaps maybe three inches. But this is the bottom hem. And I think it's coming out delightful. It's, it's a bluish, on, on the screen it appears to be more blue than gray, but in real life it's more like a grayish blue, um, and it's so pretty. It's such, such a, a muted, subtle color. It's very calming. It's a very calming shade of blue and so I think it's going to be delightful I could probably wear it with a white skirt I could wear it with a print skirt that if I could find a, a floral skirt that's got this similar hue of blue oh wouldn't that be delightful huh so that's this is what I've got so far um, I could measure it real fast to find out how far I've gotten Yeah, I'm measuring at about three and three quarter inches. So I'm almost four inches along on my top. And while we're together, I'm going to hit, go ahead and place my project marker on there. It's a pretty... It's a pretty bead. It's a kind of a, a brownish taupe or a um, perhaps bronze progress keeper bead. So I'll put that on just like so. And so now for next time we'll know where I left off and how much progress I made since the last one. But I tell you what, since I since since starting. I'm really liking the fabric I have, 
and I think it's really beautiful. And my friend Elizabeth, she's making one in a um, in a pink, but it's not like a baby pink. It's 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 not really a hot pink either. I think it's more like a a raspberry pink. I don't know the exact color name from Knit Picks, but it's it's very pretty, very pretty. Um, so she's got a pink one, and I got a blue one, and there we have it. And I am using for the first time my um, collage, those square needles that I showed you a few episodes ago. As you can see, it they knit up a very even fabric, very beautifully done. Um, they look like this. Uh, I got mine off of Amazon. They're collage, K-O-L-L-A-G-E, and it's it's an entire set. I got these for Christmas. My my brother-in-law got these for me. <laughs> And I think that's about all I have to say about it. Just want to make sure I touched all the bases that I wanted to touch. So we'll see how this progresses over time. I hope I, I hope I um, hope I move along faster in it than the other one. You know, I love working on the other one. I don't know why it's not whipping off of my needles at at the rate this one did. Maybe it's because I was changing colors. And that colored row has the the yarn over, knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, yarn over, knit two together. And doing one row of that takes a long time. Well, here, you only have to do it the one time. And then you do it all straight stock and knit up until you get to the lace portion. So I'm pretty, pretty excited about that. So the lace portion will probably take a lot of the time. But it's pretty. It's worked flat. Let's see. From the bottom front hem to the back hem with stitches placed on scrap yarn to be picked up for the neckline. And then the sides are then seamed and stitches are picked up to work the eyelet borders on the sleeves in the pearl neckline in the round. So, I'm delighted to wear this. Um, you know, you can wear it with every, whatever you want to. It doesn't have to be dressy, but it, but like my other sweater that I have, the green one that I wear, I like to wear it, you know, I, I wear it with jeans. But I like to wear it you know, when I want to do something nice. Because I made it myself, and I used very expensive yarn for that green one. This one, this stuff is way more reasonably priced. And so, you know, when I wear my green one, you know, I want to get wear out of it, but I'm, because I spent so much money on the yarn for it, I'm worried I'm going to get something on it that, you know, that doesn't, come out very easily but you know I guess that's the chance you take when you use expensive yarn so but this is a much more reasonably priced yarn so I, I would be more inclined to wear it probably more frequently plus it's a it's a color that goes with so many things like green color you know you're kind of limited with your options to what to wear it with although you know Everything goes with jeans. Jeans are just jeans are for everybody, for every for every reason and for every season. I'm gonna put this all back. Can't wait to show you the progress I make on it in the next couple of weeks. Cause I think it's gonna be fantastic. Fantastic. Okay, so that's all packed away, nice and neat. So the next project I want to show you is my new diamond art project. I am working on Winter Fox. 
I have it in my Nerd Girl Yarns project bag. And this is way much bigger than I thought it was. I, I took it out of the package and I'm like, this is going to take forever. And it probably will. But here it is. This is called Winter Fox. Look how big that is. Isn't that wonderful? It is absolutely wonderful. And you might be able to tell. Down here is where I have the diamond, the diamond beads going down here. And there are 23 different colored beads, various different colors. But it's primarily greens and oranges and browns and li little bits of white. And it's going to be a very sizable project. I know that because it's got the plastic, it reflects my lighting and I'm sorry. But I think you can get a fairly decent look at it. I'm picking around the side so that I can see that you're getting the full view. But I'm working on... See, how are you looking at it? You are looking like, I don't know. But this is the side that I'm working on. And so, um, and I just pull it back and, you know, I look at, I look at whatever colors down in the super very bottom corner. And I get that, I get that number um, B. And then I, I put them in my tray, and then I just use up the tray. So I try to go out, go out from that corner. Once I'm done with, with that little tray of beads, then I go to the next color. And I put a little bit of that on my tray, and then I spread out, you know. So w once my tray runs out of that color, I move on to the next closest color. So that eventually so that I'm working from the corner outward. And I think, I think what I want to do, since this is the narrower end, I kind of want to work from this way, this direction. So, and I started w working both directions. I was going this way and this way. But I don't know. The thing is that you don't want to peel all the, the sticky off of your canvas because you don't want your sticky to dry out. So, so I, you know, going gradually on that. But I really, really like what I have so far. I'm very pleased with my progress. And, and my husband, he's continuing to do this with me. I think it's delightful. We've, um, we, were, we, were, we started doing it on Tuesday. But then we decided that we would rather do it on Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening. So I'm doing it Sunday evening and then I'm still getting together with my girlfriend Tiffany and we're we're doing our project. She's doing a uh and it's faith, love, hope or faith faith, hope and love um sign. And it's pretty, it's in pinks and purples and some teals. And my husband, he's doing a wolf. And it's kind of a southwestern look. And so there's some turquoise in it and lots of white and gray and stuff. So, so we're really enjoying our diamond art. My friend Tiffany and my husband Scott. <laughs> so, and I asked him I, on the first day, I said, so, I said, so do you find it relaxing or do you find it completely boring? And he said, you know, I haven't decided yet. <laughs> so, but, but he hasn't, you know, when it's been time to do it, he's the one that starts it. He goes and gets his project and gets set up. And I said, oh, it must be diamond dark time. And he said, yeah. So the fact that he's starting, you know, before I am, you know, that indicates that it's right for, for now. He's actually enjoying doing it. So I just, I'm delighted. 
I'm delighted that he's doing it, and I'm doing it, and I'm delighted that Tiffany and I have a reason to get together socially to, to do our diamond art together. So, I'm happy. You know, crafting, crafting, you know, can always be done alone. But it's more fun to do crafting with people that you love and care about. My, my knitting group that I get together with. Most of the time it's just Julie and Elizabeth, but every once in a while Patty or Ginny shows up and it's just it's just delightful to connect with women, you know, doing you know, crafting projects together. It just it facilitates connection with people and um you know I look forward to it, you know. Now Granted, there are times when, like, I'm particularly bad about it on knit night. You know, if the weather's bad, I don't want to go out. So I don't. I don't go out if the weather is bad. Now, this past Wednesday, or this past Monday night, I didn't go to knit night because there was um, storms in the area. And there was a tornado warning just uh, west of us. And it was, you know, the tornado was going to go north of where we live, but I just didn't feel comfortable going out there. You know, it's weird. I lived in Alaska for 13 years and never let the weather keep me home. But at the same time, I didn't like being out there when it was actively snowing or actively bad. But now, I think it's just because I'm older and... My sense of adventure is virtually diminished, <laughs> so I don't feel like I need to risk my life and limb to go out to be with my friends. So if the weather is poorly, I just, I don't go, even if it's just rain, you know, I just, I don't feel like putting myself out there and putting myself at risk, so, so I, I don't, if, if the weather's bad, then I stay home. Which is what I did this past Monday. And, you know, Tiffany and I are like that too for Diamond Art. You know, if the, weather, if the weather's been bad, we haven't gotten together. And that's fine. Because, you know, we don't, we don't want to risk our safety for our crafty projects. And, you know, we want to be around to see our friends next time. So, you know, it's best to stay home and stay safe. So that you can be sure to see your friends again. So. so that's it for Mama Crafts. So let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Mama's Pattern Showcase. And this is the part of the show where I feature um, the top patterns that you find on Ravelry that are also available elsewhere on the internet. Um, and I always feature some crochet in it. Last, last time I shared three crochet patterns and two knit patterns. So this time I will do two crochet patterns and three knit patterns. And I always do crochet first because alphabetically crochet comes before knitting. The first pattern I would like to showcase is called Spring Lark Asymmetrical Scarf by Tanya Bush. This pattern is number one on the Crochet Top 20. Oh, and just so you know, I realized that Ravelry's Top 20 refreshes like every two hours. So, if I say it's number one today, by the time you watch it, it may, it may be further down the line. So I always provide a link, one to the Ravelry page that it's on, and also to the website that it can also be found on, okay? So if, if you look at number one, you're like, that ain't number one. Well, because Ravelry refreshes really, you know, quite frequently. So forgive me if my numbers aren't where they ought to be. But you can purchase this pattern for $2.99 on Ravelry, or you can get it free at Nana's Crafty Home website. 
This is a crochet um, scarf, asymmetrical scarf, using Knit Picks Cotton, Knit Picks Cotton, which is a DK cotton linen blend. Um, it uses a um, a 3.75 millimeter hook, which is an F. And you're used um, around 900 yards. Uh, the measured size is about 50 inches by 30 inches by 56 inches. And it's written in U.S. crochet terminology. Um, the Spring Lark Asymmetrical Scarf is a free crochet pattern on my blog. This lovely asymmetrical scarf is worked from side to side creating an asymmetrical shape. Made with a cotton linen blend yarn for a light and breathable scarf, perfect for spring. Simple crochet stitches worked in combination. Single, double, picots, and popcorns create texture and visual interest throughout. A simple pattern repeat makes this pattern easy to memorize for an evening of mindless crochet time. Complete photo and video tutorials are provided to help you work through the stitches. So check out that pattern, Spring Lark Asymmetrical Scarf by Tanya Bush. The next pattern I would like to showcase today is called Aryan Hod Afghan Square by Christine Mullen. And this pattern is number four on the Crochet Top 20. You can purchase it for $2 on Ravelry or you can get it for free at Ambassador Crochet website. This Afghan square uses worsted. Um, it, it recommends Knit Picks Brava Sport. Um, no, worsted. Knit Picks Brava Worsted. Um, and uses a hook 5.5 millimeter, which is an eye hook. And you'll need around 110 yards for a 9 inch square. Uh, pattern is in U.S. crochet terminology. Um, let's see. This pattern is free through the end of April when you join the Friendship Blanket Crochet Along. Um, the finished size of the square is 9 inches. You want to use the number 4 worsted weight. Difficulty is for advanced beginner working in the round with many cables as well as changes from a circle to a square. And it looks a little bit like a web, like a, like a, like a spider web design. It's got spokes in it. So that's a nice square. That is the Aryan Rod uh, Afghan Square by Christine Mullen. So that's it for the two crochet patterns. So on we go to the knit patterns. Uh, the first knit pattern I would like to showcase today is called Weekend in the Country by Carol J. Stolkowski. This pattern is number two on the Knitting Top 20. You can purchase the individual pattern for $5 or you can get an ebook of 10 patterns for $9.99 or you can visit the Universal Yarns website for more information. Uh, this pattern is a pullover sweaty <laughs> a pullover sweaty <laughs> it's, a, it's been storming today so that's my my weather app let me know of a flood warning if you li living near near rivers and streams your your floods may be happening so my my that noise whenever something's going on it 
It started storming way, way early this morning at 4.45 this morning. There was a huge crack of thunder that just woke me up out of my deep, deep beauty sleep. And then it just rained and stormed ever since. And we had some pretty sizable hail a couple hours ago. And so it's, it's been raining and stormy all morning. But on, on with the show. On with the show. So this is a pullover sweater uh, knit with bulky weight yarn. Um, they suggest universal yarn, bamboo bloom, and bamboo bloom hand paints. Um, it uses a U.S. size 9 and a U.S. size 8 needle. So that's a 5.5 millimeter and a 5 millimeter um, needle size. Um, it's available in six sizes, small, medium, large, 1X, 2X, and 3X. Um, this pattern is part of a 10 pattern book called Bamboo Bloom Book 1, uh, Backyard Blooms. So if you want to buy the whole book, you can get that for $9.99. But otherwise, if you just want that pattern, it's only $5. Um, and they don't give you very many <clears throat> notes about it. It just gives you finished measurements, materials required, needle sizes, and notions. But it's a very nice pullover sweater. It's just It looks like a basic wardrobe staple. You can knit it in solid or... Um, variegated yarns and it looks pretty. I like the sample that they have. It's kind of blues and yellows and cream. It's pretty. It's a pretty pullover sweater. So that is Weekend in the Country by Carol J. Sulkowski. The second knit pattern that I would like to showcase today is called Mighty Adventure 2021 by J.L. Fleckenstein. Um, it is an advent, so advent dash your, so it's like adventure. So Mighty Adventure 2021. This pattern is number five on the knitting top 20. You can purchase the pattern only for ten dollars or you can get an entire kit that includes the yarn for three hundred dollars and you can buy the pattern at lucky violet color company website so um, they don't you can't purchase this on Ravelry you have to go to lucky violet color company website and you can buy the pattern by itself for ten dollars or the kit that includes the yarn for three hundred dollars So the Mighty Adventure 2021 is a poncho or a shawl wrap using fingering weight yarn and they give you a list of, of yarns suggested um, by Lilith, L Lucky Violet Color Company which is a yarn, independent yarn dyer is what it looks like. Um, you'll use a size US 5, which is a 3.75 millimeter, and a US 7, which is a 4.5 millimeter. And you'll use up to 2,400 yards. Um, and the size available is just one size. Let's see. So it says, through April 15, 2021, sign up for our Mighty Adventure Cal Knit Along for free with discount code on the final checkout page at Lucky Violet Color Company. Our 2021 Mighty Adventure Cal will begin December 1st, 2021. And we would love to have you join us for some mighty and beautiful holiday knitting. Today's download creates your sign up for our Advent Cal. This year's design will feature a rectangular poncho style wrap 
The completed piece will wrap you in loving memories of what we hope will be an extra special holiday season spent knitting with friends. All you receive today will be a placeholder in introduction download. The pattern will not be released until late November of 2021. The only way to receive the pattern in late November is to sign up ahead of time by obtaining your introduction download today. You must use your email address when you order the placeholder so that our system can automatically email the pattern download link in late November. You will receive the pattern as one complete download at that time. Meanwhile, if you would like an extraordinary advent yarn kit, consider Lucky Violet Color Company Adventure 2021 kit available for pre-order now. You can pay in full or choose our Easy Does It layaway plan where you will get to set your own payment schedule. Please complete your payments for the Advent 2021 kits by the end of September 2021 so that, you can sh so that we can ship your kit in early November. Okay, so go to Lucky Violet Color Company um, website to either, either reserve your pattern or reserve your kit. And you can put your kit either on layaway or pay for it all at once, okay? But you're not going to get the pattern until November, and you're not going to get your kits until November, okay? But if you use the layaway plan, you have to have your stuff paid off by September so that you can get your stuff in November. That's really reasonable because some people really like to make the nice stuff, but they can't afford $300 in one pop. But, because she has a layaway plan, that makes it a little bit more desirable um, to make it. Now, I know, you're thinking, okay, $300. So the poncho is going to be $300 worth of yarn. <laughs> and you might spill coffee on it or something. You can't think about stuff like that. You can't think about it that way. <laughs> Although I just said it, so I obviously thought about that. <laughs> I've, I've, I've mentioned in the last segment that, you know, sometimes you knit stuff and the overall cost of it is worth more than you would ever pay for something in a store. And yeah, you got the time of, you know, you nurture the project, you're making it by hand, you're, you know, you, you know you're executing every stitch etc. And so there's more love that goes into it. So it makes it more valuable. But, you know, it's hard for people to come up with $300. So, I don't know. It sure is tempting, though. I'm curious to what, what the colors are going to be. I don't know. I might have to look into it. Doesn't mean I'm going to participate in a knit along. That's what I have a hard time with. I can do a knit along with my girlfriends, and I don't feel pressure. Okay, because we tried socks, and none of us finished our socks. I will eventually finish my socks, but I don't. None of us were feeling it. But there's no, there's no shaming. <laughs> you know, there's no, there's no. You know, we don't do that to each other, you know. We, we do what we feel like we need to do, and if there's other stuff we do, well, we do that. But if I participate in a knit-along, all of a sudden, my, my joy for the project evaporates. Because then I feel pressure to keep up with the people, and I don't... I don't knit fast, for one thing. You guys, you guys know that the pace that I knit my stuff at is just ridiculously slow. And I don't like putting pressure on myself. My, my craft is my, is my solitude. You know, that's my therapy. So if I'm creating stress by giving myself time, uh, time deadlines, by giving myself deadlines, 
I lose all the joy. So I might, I probably won't do the knit along, but I'm tempted to. I'm tempted to. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm not making any promises or any declarations or anything like that. But you know, I just, I just want to enjoy my hobby. I don't, I don't want. I don't, I don't want. I don't want to be too challenged. Does that sound right? I don't know. But I do like the idea of this. And it's nice that she has gone way in advance. Because I've seen, you know, you you hear about that the independent dyers that do the advent and the mini schemes and stuff like that. And they want all their money all in one, sh one uh, fell swoop. And it's like, uh, so expensive. And I'm not a minis person anyway. I I tend to shy away from minis because I don't know what to do with them. You know, I don't know. What to, I don't. I'm not creative enough to say, oh, I'm going to use this half a dozen minis to make this spectacular thing. I don't. My, my brain, my brain doesn't like to work that way. I like. I don't like to get too creative. But, but that sounds like it would be a little bit fun. So I don't know. I might, I might not. But it's nice to know that it's there in the event that I want to do an advent knit along with a bunch of strangers. So that is Mighty Adventure 2021 by J.L. Fleckenstein. All right. And then the last knitting uh, pattern I would like to showcase is called the BFFT by Kate Oates. This pattern is number six on the knitting top 20. You can purchase it for $8 on Ravelry or at Kate Oates' website. And this is a pullover top. Um, Knitted with light fingering weight yarn uh, using a US 4, which is a 3.5 millimeter, and a US 2 needle, which is a 2.75 millimeter. And the pattern is available in so many sizes. Holy smokes! From 34 inch bust all the way up to 80 inch. I've never seen so many sizes available. Well, that's not true. I think last time, last episode, I featured a pattern that was 19 sizes. How many sizes is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 sizes. So there was one for 19 sizes. This is only 12 sizes. This is only 12 sizes. Well. But it is very nice. This light and airy garment will be your best friend in mild weather. Irresistible details makes it a wardrobe staple and options are provided for both short and long sleeves. The sweater is worked from the top down with seamless drop shoulder style sleeves. This top is designed to be worn with 6 to 10 inches of positive ease. Choose the size that is at least 5 inches larger than your actual bust measurement for a comfortable fit in the armhole and neckline areas. Um, the pictures show it in size 3 with just over 7 inches of positive ease. The pattern is designed for advanced beginners um, who are comfortable with following basic shaping instructions. If you want to see some beautiful people and how this knit fits on a variety of bodies, you can check out her test knitter projects. It's wonderful. It's a beautiful top. 
is every bit as beautiful. She shows the short sleeve version and the long sleeve version. And it's lovely in both both ways. I think it's I think it's it's a good alternative to the one that Elizabeth and I are making right now. So boy that's that's just adorable and I like there's a little there's a little bit of a detail on the hem of the short sleeve that's pretty. But this pattern is BFFT by Kate Oates. So in order to recap, <clears throat> your two crochet patterns is Spring Lark Asymmetrical Scarf by Tanya Bush and the Arian Hod Afghan Square by Christine Mullen. And then the three knit patterns is Weekend in the Country by Carol J. Solkowski. Mighty Adventure 2021 by J.L. Fleckenstein. And BFFT by Kate Oates. And this concludes Mama's Pattern Showcase. So let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Mama Cooks. And I am delighted to share a recipe with you that I have used for the past two years. I discovered this recipe on uh, a website called Spend with Pennies. And the original name of the recipe was Ham I Hammy Black Eyed Peas. But she changed it to Black Eyed Peas with Ham. Um, but, you know, I had often heard that, you know, if you eat black eyed peas and cornbread and collard greens on New Year's Day for good luck. Well, I'm not superstitious in any stretch of the imagination, but I have never tried black eyed peas before. So, uh, New Year's Day of 2020, it's a good thing I'm not superstitious, right? <laughs> On New Year's Day of 2020, I tried this recipe, and my daughter and I just fell in love with this dish. It is perfect for a winter day, or a stormy day, or any day where you want comfort food. And then I made it again this past New Year's Day, because Audrey wanted to make sure she got some before she left for the year. So, <laughs> and so... And so we had him with black eyed peas and then six days later she flew off, flew away from the coop. So, so I don't know if this hammy black eyed peas is good for my luck or not. I'm thinking it's not good for my luck, but since I'm not superstitious, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but, I have made this recipe, um, now, the first time... We had had um, ham for Christmas, and I put the ham bone in the freezer and pulled it out for this recipe, okay? But this past Christmas, we didn't have ham for Christmas. Well, we had ham, but we had boneless ham, so there was no ham bone for me to use. So instead, I um, got ham hocks. Just about a pound's worth. So I used three ham hocks, which was about a pound. You can use anywhere from a pound to two pounds of ham hock. Now, it tells you that if you're using ham, you don't have to cook the ham bone the way you did. But I did. The first time I made it, I cooked the ham bone because it made the, it made the, the ham that was stuck to the bone, it just fell right off. And it... It was fine. And it didn't over... I don't feel like it overly dried the ham. It was fine. So I followed this recipe to a T. And it was it was delightful. It was so delicious. We couldn't get enough of it. She and I ate off the lef leftovers several days afterwards. And it was every bit as satisfying as the days progressed until it was gone. It took us to probably about three days 
to eat the whole pot. <laughs> My husband never touched it because he, he just wasn't having it. Um, but my daughter and I loved it. Now, I don't know what I'm going to do next year. I guess I'll have to just make it and then put, put servings aside, you know, and eat them throughout the year, which is probably what I'm going to have to do because I, I, I want to make it. When I have a hankering for this, boy, I'm going to want to make this every year. Or maybe I can send my send for my daughter, have her come down. She can enjoy our black eyed peas, and then I can send her back to Alaska. <laughs> At any rate, this is how I made hammy black eyed peas. For hammy black eyed peas, you will need one pound black eyed peas dry one meaty ham bone or one to two pounds of ham hocks, eight cups chicken stock or broth, one bay leaf, half teaspoon thyme, six slices bacon, two or three celery ribs diced, two cloves garlic minced, one green bell pepper diced, one onion diced, one 10 ounce can Rotel undrained, half cup long grain rice. The night before you're gonna eat your food, you want to thoroughly rinse the dry peas with water and then place in a large mixing bowl and fill with water to soak overnight for at least eight hours. In the morning, drain the peas, rinse them thoroughly, and set aside. Then you want to place your ham bone or hocks into a Dutch oven or a large heavy pot. Add the stock or broth, the bay leaf, and thyme. Bring this to a boil then reduce heat and simmer for an hour. In a fry pan, cook the bacon as you desire. Remove from the pan, blot with a paper towel, and dice and set aside. Using the bacon drippings that are still in your pan, gently cook the celery, garlic, pepper, and onions just until tender. Add this and the peas to the ham bone pot and simmer for an additional hour. Skim off any foam. Take the ham bone out of the pot onto a plate. Remove all the meat and discard the bones. Then return the meat to the pot and stir in the tomatoes and rice. Simmer an additional 20 minutes or so until rice is plump. Remove the bay leaf, add the bacon. Serve with collard greens and cornbread. And that's how you make hammy black-eyed peas. And now it's time for Mama Bakes. And this time I made chocolate morsel pastry cookies. And it's the first recipe in the cakes and... No. I saved the wrong page. It's the first recipe in the cookies and bars segment of Taste of Home Cooking School 50th Anniversary Cookbook. And this is what they look like. Isn't those beautiful? I used the worst grammar on that. Aren't they beautiful? They're just spiral cookies using uh, frozen puff pastry sheets. They were so easy. There was only four ingredients. I'm like, anybody can make these. Anybody. Anybody can make them. They're so easy. And it makes two dozen. And they're delicious. Now, you have to eat them 
within a couple of days of them being made because the longer because they have the cream cheese in them so the longer they they're around they get kind of sour after a few days so so if if you're making these for a get together where you're going to make them the day before and serve them tomorrow fine fine and hopefully they're all gone you know but i wouldn't serve them more than two or three days because they're just because like i said you know I made, I made the batch, which makes two dozen, and I kept a dozen for myself, and I took the other dozen to my folks, and, um, and, you know, with just two of us eating twelve, we didn't get them all eaten. I was only eating a couple a day, and my husband would eat maybe one or two, so I think I ended up having to throw about three of them away, which was fine. But they were simple to make, um... You just roll out your dough, you you take your cream cheese and sugar and mix them together, you spread it on the thing, and you sprinkle with the morsels, and then you, you roll them up, and you refrigerate it, and then when you bring it out, you slice them up, and bake them, and then they're ready to eat. And it's a delicious cookie. <laughs> so, here's how I made chocolate morsel pastry cookies. For chocolate morsel pastry cookies, you will need one package, 17 and a half ounces frozen puff pastry sheets thawed, one brick, eight ounces cream cheese softened, three tablespoons sugar, one bag, 11 and a half ounces milk chocolate morsels divided. On a lightly floured surface, roll one puff pastry sheet into a 14 by 10 inch rectangle. In a small bowl, combine the cream cheese and sugar until smooth. Spread half of the cream cheese mixture over the puff pastry, leaving a one inch border on one long side. Sprinkle with half of the morsels, roll up starting at the long side covered with cream cheese and seal the end by moistening with water. Repeat this with the remaining ingredients. Refrigerate for one hour. Line baking sheets with waxed or parchment paper. Cut each roll crosswise into 12 equal slices. Place cut side down on prepared baking sheets. Bake at 375 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes or until golden brown. Cool on baking sheets for two minutes and then transfer to wire racks to cool completely. Makes two dozen. And that's how you make chocolate morsel pastry cookies. Now it's time for Mama Reads. And I finished a book. I finished Yours Truly Thomas by Rachel Fordham. And it was a fantastic story. I tell you what, I am so grateful my friend Elizabeth turned me on to Rachel Fordham. She is such a good storyteller. You know, they're not, you know, they're, um, you know, they're not complex. But these, the stories are entirely plausible in my mind. I just, you know, and they would make excellent Hallmark movies. <laughs> but I love all the characters in them. Every character, even, even the side characters have their own personalities and they are realized in the story. And I'm just... I'm delighted. I am delighted with, with her writing. She, her first book was The Hope of Azure Springs. And this Yours Truly Thomas also takes place in Azure Springs. But it's a different, it's a different, you know, main characters. And yeah, she ties in some of the other characters that were in The Hope of Azure Springs. But, they're, but these are independent stories. So you don't need to know what happened before to know what happens next but 
It's a wonderful story, yours truly, Thomas. And I look forward, she's got another book out that I don't recall the name of, and she's getting ready to publish a new one this summer. So if you get a chance to read Rachel Fordham, I highly recommend her. She read, she she writes some really delightful stories. So that's all that I'm that I finished reading. Um, but I'm gonna swap out my battery and tell you the rest of the stuff I'm reading. So I'll be right back. So I am currently reading. I'm still working on I'm about halfway through First Peter by Jen Wilkin. A Living Hope in Christ, and we are in the middle of the second um, chapter uh, dealing with submission, and I am, I tell you what, it, um, it's strange because I never used to have, I never used to have, um, a problem with submission and, and you know generally I consider myself you know relatively submissive in a biblical sense I am not uh, you know I'm not a doormat nobody is and that's that's not that's not what that's not what uh, the Bible is telling women to be um, not only that but husbands are um, required to be gentle and loving to their wives, and so you know, you know, people who abuse their authority in the home, you know, they will they will have their reckoning. All right, now. Because we live in a fallen world, not everybody, not everybody has a, a, a biblical experience in their home life or in their work environment. Um, you know, the first, the first um, chapter on submission dealt with. Um, workers and employers and you know you, you need to be respectful um, even if you are punished for doing good okay so that's 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 what having a servant's heart is is um, being respectful and doing good even when you are being mistreated um, or treated unjustly um, in the workplace. Well, the same goes for um, as a wife. Um, we're not supposed to be overly, uh, we're not supposed to focus on our appearance as much as we are supposed to focus on the beauty of our heart and our mind. And how do you work on the beauty of your heart and on your mind? Is by spending time with the Lord every day. You know, studying, studying God's Word, uh, living it out, spending time with the Lord every day, and, and doing good things. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's our mission. And our mission field is our families our husbands, you know, that even if you're with an unjust husband, you win him over by your goodness and your gentleness and your loving kindness. So, so if, if you are being good, You know, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're always going to have a blessing from that. But you are, your rewards in heaven will be great when you live God's word. I, I need to do, 
I, I am responsible for me. I am responsible for the way I behave. I'm responsible for the way I speak. I am, respo I am responsible for what I am called to do. All right? What other people do and how they respond to what I do is not my concern. All right? That's, that's what I have to get over. Okay? If, if someone doesn't appreciate what I do, that's not, that, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If someone doesn't, you know, if I don't feel like I get credit for what I feel like I deserve credit for, change my mind. Change my mind. That, because that doesn't matter. It does not matter to me what somebody else thinks of what I do. Okay? I, I do what I do. And I follow the word best I can, you know, and I have a desire to do that. I have the desire to find God's will for my life. Not everybody, you know, not everybody appreciates that. Not everybody's interested in that. And that's none of my business. You know, I've, I've heard that phrase many times. It's nobody's business what other people think of me. Or it's... It's none of my business what other people think of me. That, that's what that is. Okay? So, so, you know, if someone's going to be nasty and hateful to me, okay. Okay. That's okay. You know? I, I don't need to harbor um, in indignation. I don't have to be, like, you know, um, confrontational. If someone doesn't like me, okay. I can be okay with that. I am following the Lord's path. So, so I have nothing to fear. I have nothing to worry about. I don't have to care what people think of me. And so that's the attitude that we have to have, you know, um, you know, do good anyway. If you don't feel like someone deserves your goodness, give them your goodness anyway. Um, you know, if you feel like you're being treated poorly, and this goes to anybody. I mean, I would say, you know, because there's, you know, there's a lot of racial tension these days, you know. And, um, you know, we need, we need to love everyone. We need to love everyone. And, you know, and if, if someone acts against me in retaliation for slavery, let them. I may not have ever owned a slave. And I have, may not ever have treated a person of color in a demeaning or ugly way. But if they want to treat me poorly, let them. Let them work out their frustrations on me. It's okay. Not everyone is perfect. And so, um, you know, whether it's just or not, it doesn't mean that they're not feeling what they're feeling. You know, whether it's justified or not. That's not the point. You be, you practice your goodness and let the rest take care of itself. So, I want to get along with everyone. I want everyone to get along with me. But that's a perfect world. We don't, we don't live in a perfect world. We live in a fallen world. And everybody, everybody reacts in their in the in the best way they know how, okay. Um, if you're if you're mature in your walk with Christ, you don't react to certain things the way people who live in the flesh do, okay. Your reactions are different. Your interactions are different. Um, so if someone is going to mistreat you, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Either they don't know any better. 
or you know they know better and they don't care so just let people just let people do their thing mean or not and and you do you do what the lord has put in your heart to do and this is what i'm getting from this submission um, segment so i don't want to I know I spend an awful lot of time talking about stuff like this, but it's important. It is important for us to, you know, you know, to to understand that the Lord knows the world that we live in. He he knows more than anybody. He knows that this is a fallen world. I mean, Jesus cried that Christ died for us, and He was beaten. And he was treated treated unjustly. He suffered. He suffered way more than I ever have. And I feel like I've had my fair share of suffering. But I am suffering. And my suffering is is incremental compared to the suffering of Christ. So I can suffer a little bit. I can endure it. I can I can handle suffering because Jesus handled suffering you get that so so don't let don't let you know what people of this world how they're reacting to social um, justice all of that stuff let them let them do their thing I'm responsible for me. I will conduct myself as best as I can according to God's word. And if that's not good enough for other people, that's not my problem. <laughs> that's not my worry. All right? I'm doing what the Lord has set before me to do. I'm going to focus on that. Okay? World be damned. <laughs> Oh, I don't damn the world. I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not putting myself in that position. I'm not the Lord. <laughs> but the Lord, the, the Lord's going to judge. He knows, he knows what is and what isn't justified. Okay? So let's not, let, let's not us be, let us not be the judge of other people. Let's, let's focus on what we're to do and let everybody else either you know, focus on what the Lord has them to do, or they're going to do whatever they want. Okay? Just let them, let them do their thing. So, I'm done talking about First Peter and submission and all of that stuff. The other book that I'm reading, I'm listening to on audio, is a classic. I'm listening to The Shell Seekers by Rosamund Pilcher. Such a good story. Um... I'm about a third of the way in. I have read her book Winter Solstice and I loved it. I loved Winter Solstice. Well, I'm enjoying the shell stickers as well. Um, this was, this is a modern classic. It was written in the 80s. And I am absolutely loving um, these people. Um, I, well, I'm loving and, and I'm disliking them, but it's a really good, engaging story about people. I love relational stories, and and this hits me in, you know, everything that I like about a book, relationship-wise. And so, I find it very engaging, and... Um, you know, if, if you're looking for a modern classic, something that's good, um, you know, and it's, it's, you know, it, it's definitely not Christian fiction. It's, you know, it's everyday, everyday people doing everyday things in everyday ways. But it's, it's just the way that she tells a story about the people. It makes you feel for the people. She makes you feel for the people. And I like that. I like that very much. So... You know, I'm look. I'm I'm kind of interested in reading more books from her library, just because, you know, she's such a good writer. But that is the Shell Seekers by Rosamund Pilcher. 
And then on my Kindle, um, just yesterday I started um, a book called Even Better Than Eden. Nine Ways the Bible Story Changes Everything About Your Story by Nancy Guthrie. And I've only, I've read the introduction and the first chapter so far. And the first chapter is, um, relates to, um, in the wilderness. And it's been good. It's been good. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm liking this. I'm liking this book quite a lot. Now, Nancy Guthrie, I know her because I used to listen to a podcast called Teaching Teaching the Bible or something like that. And it was a really good one. I don't know why I phased it out. I guess, you know, different different seasons for different things. But she's she's really good. Now, I'm glad I read this. I'm reading this book. Um, so... I don't know what else to say. I mean, well, I'm only a couple of chapters in, but so far I'm in, I'm liking what I'm reading. So, but that's it. That's all I'm reading for now. Plus, you know, I, I do a daily Bible reading every day, a segment of the Bible so that I haven't read in a year. But besides that, that's about all I'm reading, and I'm really enjoying. I'm enjoying my reading lately, so that's good. So let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Miscellaneous Mama, and this is just where I talk about the highlights of my past couple weeks and, and things to come as I, as I know them to be. A um, couple of Saturdays ago, not this past Saturday, but the Saturday before, we went out socially with a couple that we hadn't gone out with before. Um, and we had a really nice time. We were going to go to a buffet down in Coal Camp. They have a buffet down there on Friday and Saturday nights from 4 to 8. Well, we go down there at about 5 o'clock. And the line to get in the place was wrapped around the entire back of the building. You had the front door and down the side and around the back. And that's where the line to get in ended. And we decided we weren't willing to wait. <laughs> so the trick to that place is to get there probably around 3 and be one of the first batch in. <laughs> but we've heard that they have tremendous food and so we do plan to go there but we you, you have to play the game. You have to figure it out. But since we were in Cold Camp we decided to see what else they had down there. Cold Camp is a little town south of Sedalia. Um, and they have a, a little um, restaurant down on the main drag called uh, the German Table and it's authentic German food which we had never been to before and they had never been there before either. So they, they had room for us. Normally they take reservations but we weren't aware of that. And you know if, if they're a reservation only place sometimes they're gracious enough to to give you a table and so they gave us a table and the specials that evening was sour broughton but they also had a variety of schnitzels and stuff like that. Well, um, sour broughton, as it turns out, is just pot roast with um, kind of a, a, a sour gravy. And it was good. I, I ordered that. My husband got schnitzel with some kind of sauce on it. There were like 10 different varieties of schnitzel. And the schnitzel, all it is is breaded meat, uh, breaded pork or chicken and it comes with a, a different sauce. So that's why there was 10 different, because I guess there was 10 different ways you could have schnitzel. So my husband got the chicken, and I got the sour broughton. And I had mine with 
uh, German potato salad and um, cooked red cabbage. Now I love cabbage and I love the red cabbage that comes in the jar that sweet sour oh my goodness that stuff was so good but uh, I had the the red cabbage and it, it didn't taste anything like the stuff that comes in the jar but it was so good I <laughs> I was shoveling that stuff in oh it was so delicious and the sour broughton was good too I didn't really care for the German potato salad I ate it I ate it all um, well, I, I, well while at the restaurant I ate about half of it and I took the rest of it home and I ate it the next day after church for lunch but it was good and I we enjoyed the company Lisa and Jim were very very nice uh, we enjoyed visiting with them and uh, we had a really good evening and so even though we didn't end up eating at the place we had planned to eat at uh, you know we ended up at a really good restaurant and we enjoyed the company and we enjoyed an evening with a couple that we've never been out with socially before so that was that was that was a delight. It warmed our heart to be with them. And then, um, not much else is going on. Um, we are trying to get back into our exercise routine, although I'm not being very consistent about it. I, I want to walk. I want to get back into walking. Um, but I'm not really... I haven't worked it into my routine and I have certain things that I like to do during the day now and if I have to give up some things in order to work my exercise into my routine and I just don't know if I'm willing to give up some stuff in order to make it all work. So. But it's important to me. I want to get my heart and lungs back in shape. I gained about 20 pounds um, from the time I was sick with cancer, and I don't want to gain. I don't want to gain back all that I lost because. I was looking pretty good at around 150 pounds. I, I bottomed out at about 147. And at 147, I was looking rather gaunt, I would say. Which, you know, you would think that 147, you know, is still kind of plump. But to me, to me on my body, 147 was gaunt. And I'm not particularly tall. I just, you know, I just, I, I looked like I was sick. But, you know, and I'm at 167 now, and I don't feel like I'm particularly large, but I know 167 is a lot for, you know, it, it, it's considered overweight by some people, but I don't feel like I'm overly large. So, you know, I'm not worried about my size so much, but I just want to get my heart and lungs um, healthy. I want to work on my core. I want um, a strong spine, and I want my abs. Not because I want a flat stomach. I don't care about. I don't care about what I look like in a bathing suit, but I I want to tighten up my my stomach and my spine so that my core is healthy. I don't care about my arms and legs. I just want my heart and lungs and my spine and my stomach to all be, be in good shape. So, so that's kind of what I want to focus on. But, you know, I just I just had to figure out how to work that into my lifestyle. So, so if you're a praying person, pray for me that I get that uh, figured out. You know, and I trust that I will. I'll get it figured out at some point, but, you know, I'm not in a big hurry. It's not that big of a deal. Um, what's coming up? i tell you what's coming up. Let's see, we're having our third Sunday fellowship on Sunday. 
I'm looking forward to that. As a matter of fact, I decided what I'm going to make for that, and I am excited. I'm excited about that. Um, Scott's birthday is next Wednesday. So after Bible study uh, with my girlfriends, Scott and I are going to spend the day together. We're probably going to go to my folks' house. He wants to have a meal with my parents. So I don't know if I'm cooking a meal or if we're going out to eat. Yeah, but he hasn't decided. And I told him, well, it's your birthday. You decide what you want to do. If you want me to fix something to eat, we'll go to my folks' house and I'll make something. Or if he wants to go out, we'll all go out to eat. And then the Saturday following his birthday, the 27th, we're having a birthday party for him. And we don't normally have birthday parties, but last year I was planning a surprise birthday party for him because he turned 50. And um, his men's ministry get-together was falling on his birthday. So I was going to hijack the men's ministry get-together and have a surprise birthday party for him. Well, COVID, COVID ruined my surprise party. So he never got a birthday party for his. So even though he's only turning 51, I'm giving him his 50th birthday party on the 27th. So we're having shish kebabs and we invited a few families over and we're having hot dogs and hamburgers for the children. And we're just going to have a nice meal and wish Scott a happy, happy, you know, happy 51st birthday. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully we'll have a nice turnout. I sent out invitations, but I haven't gotten very many RSVPs. And I know there's people that are still concerned about COVID and stuff. So, but, you know, most of the people that we invited don't seem particular, you know, they're, they're not. They're not the ones that are overly concerned about the virus, so. And we haven't had a big virus breakout, outbreak, so. So we'll see. Hopefully we'll have a few people come and and ring in his, his next 50 years. And, but that's about it. Today's St. Patrick's Day, but I'm not wearing green because I don't care. <laughs> I'm not Irish. I wore, I think I, I know I wore green the last episode, uh, last year, but I'm not an Irish person, so I don't care about Irish, even though my last name is McHenry, <laughs> so I don't know if I'm, and I, I said, I guess he said that last year, Scott, Scott's not certain if he's Irish or if he's Scottish, so, but his last name is McHenry, so whatever that is. And I come from Scandinavian descent, so um, my mom's Finnish. And my dad's just a mutt, so I am half Finn and half mutt. <laughs> so, that's it. So, let's move on to the final segment. And now it's time for Media Mama. And I want to thank you for spending your time with me today. I know that watching my program is a choice. And I am grateful that you have chosen to spend a slice of your valuable time with me. If you liked what you saw today, I encourage you to click subscribe. All that does is make it more easy for you to find me next time. I post my episodes on the first and third Thursday of the month, but... If you click that notification bell, it'll automatically send you a notice every time I upload a video. Um, if you have any questions about my program, you can ask me questions down in the comments. Or you can send me an email at midmomama2 at gmail.com. You can find me on Ravelry as midmomama, and I am also on Goodreads. I have a link to my Goodreads account. Um, on my YouTube page and on my website. If you want to know anything about this program, um, links to all my stuff are in my show notes. I have a website where I post my show notes because sometimes there's not enough room on the description box to provide a link for every single thing. 
So I have my show notes, so if you click on my website, it'll take you straight to my show notes for every episode. And I think that's it. So, until next time, may God bless you. Bye.